Hey guys, Haley here, flying in bright and crashing into your backyard. And today I'm bringing you my first ever movie review because I'm like super psyched. And for some reason, I feel really anti energetic. So I might blab a little less right now. Wow, I feel great. I have no clue why though. Maybe I should turn on the light or maybe I should open the blinds. So I figured out that neither of those things were going to help since the window was there and if I open it and I'm got my face here, then that's not really going to help because then this side of my face is... Whatever side of my face is going to be all dark. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, sorry if I kind of look like my eyes are over here. That's because the video camera is literally right here. Well, the webcam's here. But the actual thing where I can see my face is like there. So, yeah. So anyway, I went to see Rampage with my dad. And that was really cool. And I just want to talk about that. I'm going to try and avoid spoilers. I'm not sure if there's a systematic way to spoiler-proof your view. I think I'm just going to avoid saying what characters die. And some major plot-revealing stuff. But I'm pretty sure most of this stuff... Knowing it won't really spoil the movie. The only thing that really matters is characters die and big kind of reveal type stuff, which there wasn't really much of. So anyway, first off, I'm going to talk about the characters, which were obviously played by... Well, I only know who one of them was actually played by, and that was The Rock, and everyone knows that all Dwayne Johnson movies are amazing. Because reasons that just don't seem to present themselves. I actually have no clue. Is there like a formula? Someone tell me why all Dwayne Johnson movies are great. And can someone come up with an answer besides because Dwayne Johnson is, is awesome. He's a great actor. But there's got to be something about all the movie season. Something about the plot that is just wonderful. So you've got Dwayne Johnson and then you've got this monkey. The albino monkey named George. And you've got Dr. Caldwell. Agent Russell, who, uh, according to my dad, was played by that guy who plays that really evil character on The Walking Dead. I don't know. I don't watch The Walking Dead because zombies are not my thing. But, uh, yeah. Um, and he's really good playing his role. Because his role is a guy who is a big a-hole. And, yeah. He's pretty good at being that. So then you got your villains who are Fred and Claire, which are really, really common but surprisingly fitting names for the villains. I think they're siblings, but I don't know. So there's no romance between these two. None. And yeah, that's it. Oh, right, right. The main character's name is Davis, and he's an animal trainer, and he trained George to be the way George is. He has all these... I'm just gonna sit up so I can actually use my arms. He has all these, like, gestures, like... Like, UK, and, uh, it's me. Those were all the, well, there was, like, cry and scared, and I think that's, that's really all I can remember, I'm gonna be honest here. And it was really cool, because it makes you wonder, can a gorilla actually be trained to understand and do those things? That is really special. So, anyway... The movie begins in space, and <clears throat> with these, um, this woman who is trapped up in this space station that has been totally wrecked by this huge mutant rat, and they're the, they're, she's trying to get to escape pods, but then she um, is radioing the people in charge, they've got the escape pods locked, and they say, you're not getting on that escape pod until you get my samples. So she has to go back and she has to get the samples, which shows first what makes our makes us despise our villains is that they don't care about their human employees. They'll do literally anything to get what they want. They're horror people and they just seem so generic. I'm just going to be honest. Well, not really generic, but just they don't get enough screen time. I don't really think that the villains get enough screen time. They should be on screen more. They should have more interactions with the main character. They're more like they're more like the behind the scenes. Oh, so this is happening. Well, then we are going to do this and we are going to and the hero is not going to see that coming and then we're going to be awesome because we're evil. Mwahaha. Something like that. Isn't that what all villains are like though? <clears throat> so <clears throat> 
she gets the samples and she's going back to the escape pod. And then she... <clears throat> and then she um, is being chased by the big mutant rat. And then she goes into the escape pod and she jettisons it out. Like, the, the window's real scratched up. And I'm not going to say what happens next because I don't want to, like, bring any spoiler or anything into this. Uh, long story short, three of the canisters ended up falling into Earth and crashing right into the place for animal conservatory stuff. And these things, the cancer of whatever, mutagen, mutagen type nonsense stuff, ends up getting into the systems of a wolf, a gorilla, or our gorilla, George. Nice name there, by the way. And a crocodile. <laughs> And these things, whatever is in that stuff is like way worse than steroids. So what happens is suddenly these things are changing. You've got this big stuff on the rise. The people are crazy because there are b big monsters doing bad stuff in the wild. And then just like big emotional connections to our main character starts getting crazy and big and crazy big and like, it just doesn't stop. He's hungry, and he's so hungry that he kind of loses his mind because he didn't have a Snickers, so he wasn't really himself. Um, and so then... <clears throat> so then, uh, the villains decide, oh, we see those monsters. We really need to get them, because we need those samples, so we're gonna set up this radio tower thingy to kind of draw them in because they got frequency stuff in their head. So they all start running towards one area and no one can stop them because these things have like magical or scientific regeneration properties. So unless you kill them in one blow or five or six, they are coming back. And that was a really big thing in the final scene. They just wouldn't die. <sighs> but it's actually a pretty good thing in the end. So Anyway, they have to, and so, um, Davis meets Miss Caldwell, who, oh right, when they have the stuff, they meet, he meets Miss Caldwell, who was working with the people, and then got fired and sent to prison, and then something else happened, and she ends up, um, because she knows that what they're doing is wrong, and she needs to find the antidote for this stuff. And so it begins basically like a race for her and Davis to get to, um, I don't actually know what city this takes place in. And then you've got the stuff like the government, or more like the military gets in the way, and Russell is there, who's all Mr. Cowboy, and he's, and this, uh, military officer is, yeah, they were gonna, yeah, so the military kind of gets in the way, because military doesn't trust anyone. And so, yeah, uh, so far... I love the storyline. I love the plotting. It's just nothing feels, everything feels linear, which is a good thing in a movie. In a video game, that's bad. But in a movie, linear storyline is great. So you have no diversions. They're focused on one goal. Nothing feels completely random. Like Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of all over the place. Great movie, not a linear storyline. <laughs> and so... That storyline, that's great. Characters are great. Davis is kind of a little bit intense, but he's got a sense of humor. He really cares about his animals. And then you got <clears throat> Dr. Caldwell, who is really... I actually can't describe her personality, but she seems to be the sense of reason, and no one listens to her. I don't know why. Then you've got Russell, who I've already explained is Mr. Cowboy. And you've got Fred and Claire, the two villains. Claire is kind of like this... In control. I've always got a plan, brother. Don't, don't worry. And Fred is always like this. Do you know the FBI is coming into our building right now? We need to hide the samples. Come on, Claire. Why aren't you worried? Basically like me. He kind of reminds me of me, which is funny because he's a villain. And so <clears throat> I just love the kind of dynamic. Never have I seen a co-villain that is all nervous and stuff like that. He just... It's refreshing, and I've never really seen it before, and it just, it works so well. So, yeah, those two were our main bad guys. I had something I was going to say about Fred, and I completely... Oh, now I remember. Has anyone seen a TV show called Kong? These two kind of remind me 
just a little bit of the main bad guys in that story. I don't know the, about Fred because the male villain in Kong seems a little bit more level-headed, but the woman is perfect because she's all she's almost emotionless. So she's always so perfectly in control. Plus, there's a giant monkey, so... Next, got like, um, acting. Acting is great. Like I said, the villains were all great. And I just love, there's so much humor because the monkey, like, you know, in movies where you've got a character who communicates through something other than speaking, like Chewbacca. Chewbacca is, <laughs> he's a great example of that because you never know what he's truly saying. You only have Han Solo there to say, oh, really? I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> So basically, it's a thing like that. And not only is the comedy great, then there's also the last part I want to talk about is the CGI. Oh my gosh. These things, was, this is so creative because sure, you've got a ginormous monkey, but not only do you have a ginormous monkey, you have a wolf that's been like connect, combined with other DNA of animals and a crocodile the same. The whole time, you're like, When's, when's the monster going to come out? What is it going to look like? It's going to look so cool. In my opinion, the alligator is the coolest looking thing ever. I don't even know how the stuff's combined with, but it's just, oh my gosh, the CGI is amazing. There's so many explosions. Sorry. Um, it's just so cool. There are explosions, there are helicopters crashing, there are skyscrapers falling, and there's three freaking huge monsters that are obviously CGI, and that's just... That's just the tip of everything. It's so amazing. There's so much action. It's so linear. It's so easy to follow. Being linear doesn't mean it's boring. It means that it's easy to follow. You don't get confused. You don't get misled. And it happens. The only thing that I would have changed about the movie is I just would have made the bad guys seem like more of a threat. I would have made them just, I would have gave them more screen time. I would have gave them a darker history. Of course, they have been performing horrible experiments on animals. They pin a lot of stuff on other people, and generally, they're just easy to hate. But, honestly, when you look past Claire and the bad stuff she's done, I just, mm, it almost seems like the bad stuff they've done is just thrown in there to try and make them look more menacing. Now, if you took Fred, mm, I don't want to say you should get rid of him, because I love the idea of a villain who's totally off his rocker, has no clue what to do, because he's just, he's just so, like, Bruh. I love that guy. He just kind of seems to take away from her sort of... Now, it's it's nothing to do with Fred. It's just because they didn't really write Claire the right way. I kind of... Sure, she may have shot a couple of people on screen and stuff. Mm, it's just... She's not threatening enough. They need to fix that. Oh, another great thing about the movie. All of the violence. Yeah, as long as it's not gore-inducing, then they show it. You know how in Jurassic Park, when someone got stomped on and they cut away... Yeah, they don't do that in this movie. When someone gets stomped on, you see it's BAM! He's dead. And it's just so great. So, I hope that I've done my great review without spoiling anything. What is the... What is the uh, main point? Main idea? Main lesson you gain from this movie? A-holes stick together. Yeah, that is a thing. You just put that on a button and you can sell it for a dime. <laughs> So anyway, I would give this movie, in my opinion, 4.5 mutant gorillas out of 5. Yeah, that's that's my that's my rating. I wouldn't use stars because that's old. Even if we are a celestial-based channel, I guess I could use nebulas. But I don't want to. So I'm going to use mutant gorillas. I have a feeling that if I was going to do, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, they'll change. They'll change by thing. And I have dinner waiting for me and I have to go... But until next time, guys, I hope you like this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you watch that movie. Dwayne Johnson is totally awesome. I've got a couple of things coming up that I've got planned that are totally awesome. I want to do something about Canada. I want to do something about Hufflepuff because I'm a Hufflepuff, as we all know. Well, no one knows that because no one watched any of our Harry Potter videos. So why don't you go watch some of those? They're actually pretty funny when you actually take a moment to look at them. So, if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, click that bell, and become part of the Star Squad today. And until next time, guys, this is Haley flying out.